Celebrate your name. There is no one like you. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to you, Lord. We sing hallelujah to you, Lord. We sing hallelujah. To you, Lord. Ay, alleluia. Sing alleluia to you, Lord. Alleluia. Sing alleluia to you, Lord. Sing Alleluia, sing Alleluia, we sing Alleluia to you, Lord. We praise God, the Son and Holy Ghost. Son and Holy Ghost, we sing Alleluia, sing Alleluia, we sing Alleluia to you, Lord, my God, you are mine. And greatly to be praised, my God, you are good. My God, you are mighty. And greatly to be praised, oh Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. My God, you are mighty. And greatly to be praised, O oh Lord, you are good. A God, you are mighty. And greatly to be praised, O oh Lord, you are good. A God, you are mighty. And greatly to be praised, O oh Lord, I worship. Lord, I worship you, my God, you are mighty, and greatly to be praised. 
There is no one like you, Lord. There is no one like you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Thank you for your kindness, Lord. Thank you for protection, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you for dominion. Thank you for provision. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, ancient of days. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. A she alabara giga. A she alabara giga. A she alabara giga. A in alabara giga jula. There is somebody there. You have been experiencing a persistent headache for some time now. Not just today. It's been there for a while. Please come. There is somebody around your neck, in this, this bone around the neck here. You have pains there. Please come. Somebody in your hip on the right side. The hip and the thigh of the right leg. You have pains there. Please come. Another person you have your pains around the right knee. Please come also. Thank you, ancient of days. There is no one like you, giver of life. Be lifted up, be lifted up, ah, oh Lord, be lifted up, for you are holy, righteous and worthy. In the name of Jesus, I cause that affliction. In the name of Jesus, I cause that affliction. In the name of Jesus, I cause that affliction. In the name of Jesus, I cause that affliction. In the name of Jesus, I cause that affliction. In the name of Jesus, I cause that affliction. In the name of Jesus, I cause that affliction. In the name of Jesus, I cause that affliction. In the name of Jesus, I cause that affliction. In the name of Jesus. I cause oh that affliction Lord, in the name oh of Jesus. Lord, Lord, For you are holy, righteous and worthy. Oh Lord, Be lifted up, I be 
been lifted up. I cross that affliction in the name of Jesus. Be lifted up. For you are holy. For you are holy. Righteous and worthy. Oh Lord, be lifted up. No one like you anywhere, Father. No one. You came into my life and brought joy. You came into our lives and brought peace. You came into our lives and brought favor. You made our life meaningful. Thank you. You are the value of our life, the strength of our life. We know that it's not because we are good. It's just your mercy. Truly, you will show mercy upon whom you will show mercy. Thank you for your mercy in our life. Thank you for the access we have to your presence. Thank you, ancient of days. I thank you for all the healings you have done this morning. I thank you for all the blessings you have released upon our lives today. Take all the glory, Lord. And I request that you finish up every work you have started. Do many more. Impart our lives, impart our businesses, impart our families, impart our destinies in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayer. We give you the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Please sit down in the presence of God. It's good to see your lovely faces this morning. Thank you for coming. Uh, two announcements quickly. Our healing experience, the last one for this year holds next week, I think. Yes, next week. Not this week. Next week. And uh, it's a li living uh, healing program for people who need healing. We couldn't do the one for September because of the miracle explosion but this one is going to hold and that's from Thursday 5th December to Saturday 7th December we we'll start on Thursday in the evening the first session will be at 6pm in the evening on Thursday and then on Sat uh, Friday we have two sessions, morning session and evening session. I think the morning sessions normally start at 9 a.m. And the evening session will start 6. So, and then on Saturday, it's only one session in the morning for people who need to know what the schedule will look like. Um, it's a living program. And the venue is Ileitura. The venue is Ileitura. And uh, we need you to register ahead so that we can plan, we can know exactly like how many people we are expecting. If you are sick and you need um, divine visitation, then the meeting is meant for you. However, when you are coming, we need you to have faith in God. It's not for people who don't have faith. It's not for people who just come to check, to see. Come with confidence. Come with an assurance of what God will do for you. And uh, our God is a great God. We always have testimonies of great healings. So I'd like you to plan to come if it concerns you. Now, if you, if you really, if, if you will need, if you're, you know, there are dimensions to afflictions. If you can't do things by yourself, 
and you are coming for the meeting, you will need to bring somebody along with you to assist you. We have enough space for that. So, bring that person along with you. The registration is free. The program is free. Everything is free. Free food, free accommodation for people who come. So, the only thing you need to worry about is how to get yourself to Ilaitura. We, we don't transport. You come by yourself. Okay, so if you are coming, you can register with Pastor Laughter on 0903 1855 Again, 0903 So just call ahead within this week so that we'll be sure that you are coming and then we can plan for you. And it will help us to know what we need to assist you if we need to do anything. Okay. So that's number one. The second one is that there will be workers retreat this year for all our workers in the church. We would start on the 26th. We have the calendar allowed us to leave 25 alone this year. So for those of you, all the abundant days, we have given you your Christmas so that you can, you can go and greet Father Christmas or Uncle Christmas or Sister Christmas, whatever you want to. So 25 is out of it this year. And I'm not promising that it will be like that next year. Oh. Calendar will decide. <laughs> but this time around we have, we, we, could, we could easily do it 26 to 28. So, mark that on your calendar, 26 to 28 December, all workers. Okay, let's get to work. Orore lo ba ni la, orore. Open your Bible to Matthew chapter 4. Orore, orore. Orore, 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 orore. Do you believe that? Sing it once more. Orore, 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 orore. Orore, 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 The word of God is quick, is powerful, is sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is quick, is powerful. Okay, Matthew chapter 4. I'm going to read from verse 1 to 11. Matthew chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, 
all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Praise God. Okay. Last week, we began to look at Jesus' temptation. And I explained that God actually led Jesus into temptation, to that temptation, to the examination. Because it's a normal part of progress in life. That's what I tried to explain to you last week. That God, God actually led him there. It was God that took him there for temptation. And I remember telling you that we also do the same for our children. When our children are meant to move forward in life, we take them for external examinations. We sponsor their examination. You, you, you save money to pay for your child's champ. Is it jam? Yes, jam. Pay Waek. Pay GC. Pay Neko. Whatever exam is possible. Why do you do it? So that they can make progress in life. Even though it's examination they are doing, you sponsor it so that they can go forward. And I explained to you last week that temptation is like examination. The same way you as a parent will sponsor your kids' examination, God sponsors you into temptation. So that temptation can happen in your life and open the door for your movement into your glory. Today I want to go further to show you that temptation is normal for you too. Something that would normally happen is a normal thing. Temptation is a normal thing. And it doesn't matter whether you are female or you are male. It doesn't matter whether you are a kid or you are a grown-up. It doesn't matter how matured you are spiritually or how immature you may be. Temptation is a normal part of life. So you can say my title today is it is normal. To have it fully, you say Jesus was tempted. Number two, it is normal. That's the way I titled it. Jesus, last week was Jesus was tempted, number one. And then the other topic, I gave it. This one is number two. It is normal. So you can say it is normal. Temptation is normal. Whatever you want to try to it on your paper, on your on your record. But for me, I said Jesus was tempted, number two. It is normal. Just as a kid may not be able to move from primary school to secondary school without examination, you too can't move forward in your destiny until you pass through temptation or call it examination for progress. There are temptations in every journey, every aspect you go in your life. Actually, our life is broken into phases, sections, from one to another, from one to another. And you are moving from one step to another step, to another step, to another step. Before you move to the next one, you must pass the test for this one. When you pass the test for this one, then you go to the next one. Many times, our finance, financial life is also in those stages like that. When you pass a particular test, then you go to another one. So I'm saying temptations are normal part of the progress of your life. Why am I telling you that? So that you would handle temptations properly. They are normal parts of life. There are things that must happen before you make progress. As a matter of fact, Jesus was led by the Spirit of God to the wilderness 
The Bible says to be tempted by the devil. Because even he could not accomplish his destiny without temptation. He has to go through temptation, pass through it before he could uh, step into his destiny. Now, unfortunately, in most believers have strange perceptions about the devil. About the devil. We have strange ideas about who the devil is, what he looks like, and all of that. For instance, some believe that the devil cannot come near them. You know, when you, when you have perceptions that you have about the devil, you, you will imagine that he will not come near you. Because we believe that the devil is like a, is a dragon with horns, two, not even one, two horns on his head, and a long tail. And his teeth, it's like, you know, like the teeth of a lion. Yeah. And it's always coming to chew you and to attack you, to kill you and things like that. So we, 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 we come on, we guide ourselves. We believe that we are guided by strong angels that are protecting the demon, the devil from reaching us. And when we pray, ah, then fire is much at that time. The devil cannot come. And I pray. So you think your fire at that time is so heavy. No devil can enter. Am I, am I speaking to you? And when you've experienced something demonic, you say, ah, that means my prayer is very weak. I must pray more. You jump up and you begin to do some things that we call prayer that are not prayer. You know, a lot of prayers we pray are fear. They are just expressions of fear. You jump up. Maybe you have had a bad dream or something. And you jump up from your dream and you begin. And you think you are praying. You are just expressing your fear. One day work by me. That's what you are doing. Prayer is communication between you and God. So that thing you did when you had that bad dream, you can't call it prayer. No, it's meaningless to heaven. They just, heaven will just be looking at you. Hey, hey. A pity that you don't know what you should know. Okay, I'm coming to something. So we have this perception about the devil that makes us believe that when you are fasting, when you are praying, the devil cannot come near you. Oh, when you are in church, the devil dare not enter. And uh, even when you are in other places and the devil shows up, you just say, Jesus. The moment you say, Jesus, the devil will scamper away, run away from that place. Hello? Let me, let me up, up date your... <laughs> your perception let me update it so that you will see something there Jesus himself Jesus himself the devil went to tempt him so what gives you an impression the devil cannot come to where you are Jesus himself the devil went to meet him and not even just on an ordinary day, Jesus had been fasting 40 days. So you can imagine the amount of fire all around him by that time. If there is fire that comes by those fasting and things like that. So you can imagine how the amount of fire all around him. And Mr. Devil showed up and said, excuse me. Excuse me. But you know what amazed me there was that Jesus was not surprised to see him. Jesus was not surprised. He didn't say, how did you enter my fire? How did you enter this place when I'm very serious here? No. They just had a conversation. And I want you to know that those perceptions that you have are faulty. If you remember the story of Job, we saw how the devil went into the presence of God. God, oh, God himself. God himself. God himself. The Bible says God was having a meeting with his angels. The sons of God, they came before God. And behold, Satan was there. And the Lord said, Ogbeni, 
there you are. How did you get? How, how, how? And he said, I've come from all the journeys all over the world. And then God said, have you seen my servant Job? Have you seen? He, even God was talking with Sita. <laughs> Anyhow. And the Bible presented that event like a normal event. Jesus will experience series of temptations from the devil in this story that we just read. But I don't want to go into those temptations yet. Even though Jesus was fasting, he had been fasting for 40 days, the devil tempted him. Which means that the devil was not afraid to take Jesus on. Neither was he intimidated by the fast that Jesus was fasting. So why would he be afraid to come to you or to anyone else? The devil is not afraid of your fast. The devil is not afraid of your going to church or not going to church. Your religious exercise does not threaten the devil. Because it was while Jesus was fasting that the devil came to tempt him. The devil can, you know, manifest anytime, anywhere. But don't ever forget this. The devil doesn't come like a dragon spitting fire. Oh yes, people give us that picture. The Bible, even the Bible spoke about him as a dragon sometimes in Revelations. All of that are just pictures to give you a perception about him. That doesn't mean that's the way it's going to appear when it comes. Oh, if he came as a dragon to speak to Eve, will Eve have listened to him? No, how many of you will talk to a dragon when you see one? A dragon just shows up in your room and is <laughs> and then fire is spitting out of his mouth. You will say, Welcome, sir. What can I do for you? Huh? What are you likely to do? Ah. Even if you listen to him, you'll be quick to win that temptation. Because you already know that this one is from the devil. But the devil is a very beautiful, he comes out like a beautiful person. He manifests like a glorious person. And he can manifest anytime. Oftentimes, the devil will speak from the mouths of men. I remember a personal experience some years ago. I used to live here at that time and I would normally go to Electura as my prayer mountain. We were about to do a healing, a healing service one Sunday. And the Lord said I should take five days, I can't remember whether five or three or four days to be in the mountain ahead of that healing service. So I was there. I went, it was that time, pure forest. In fact, I, 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 I just began to use the place that much then. So, I was there for all the days, fasting, praying, fasting, praying. And then Sunday morning, I just took my bath there and I came straight to service. I was coming straight to service. With the anointing of that fast. With the fire of that fast. I was just coming for the healing service. As I drove to Olode. It was early in the morning. Very early. In fact, it wasn't bright yet. But there was one man. By the roadside there. Who saw me and started waving. Hey, 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 hey. And it was somebody I had known in Olode, one of the people there. One of the few people I knew in Olode at that time. So I said, ah, okay, I should, I should listen to what you want to say. So I, I stopped my vehicle and... He said, ah, where are you coming from? Did you sleep in the forest? And I'm like, ah, will you stop me to ask that kind of silly question? Am I your staff? That's the picture I had inside me. But I can't say that. So I just said, no. And I moved. 
I drove off. As I drove from Olode to Ayego, I was so angry with the man. I was just, ah, what kind of question is that? What relationship do we have to warrant that kind of rubbish? He was asking me why, whether I slept in the forest. What's his business? What's his business? And the spirit said, was that why you told him a lie? You said no, but you slept in the forest. You have been there for days. That was falsehood. So I he I said, Don't mind the, the, the fellow. If I had told him yes, everybody will know I slept there. And they will be coming to meet me whenever I'm there next time. That's why I had to tell him no. And the Lord said, there is no falsehood that is correct. There is no falsehood that is correct. That was lying. You, you just lied. I said, I'm sorry, Lord. He said, I know you are sorry. <laughs> I know you are sorry. But do you know that all your fasting and prayer for five days, you have just thrown everything away? The devil was wise enough. When I was shouting in the mountain, he didn't come to meet me. He didn't fight, so he didn't. He, he was hearing me. He just allowed me. Ma she law. Ma ni shojo. You can do well. I was battling, fighting, battling, fasting. I was hungry. I couldn't drink water. I couldn't do anything. Just waiting on God. And then I came out in the glory of that fasting and prayer. And he was waiting for me at the right place. And he just asked me the right question. He knew what he could ask. He knew how to put it and get my attention. And he got me flat. The Holy Spirit said, let me tell you what has happened. Because of that falsehood now, your healing service is going to be a wasted time. There will be no single healing there. I said, but I've been fasting. I've been praying. And the Bible says this. The Bible says that I began to argue and bring my strong reasons before the Lord. And the Lord said, eh, it's not about me. It is about him, your accuser. He has already accused you before God. And your balloon has been deflated. You cannot blow into that balloon and cause it to expand again. So I stopped my direction of prayer. So I asked the Holy Spirit, okay, what should I do? And he said, there are two options. It's either you go back to that place and go and tell that man that you told him a lie. And then you cut off the devil. Or when you get to the church, start your sermon with that. And tell the people that you told a lie while you were coming. And the devil will be forced to leave you alone. Because he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. Of course, both of them were difficult. I, can't, I couldn't go back to a lot there to go and tell the man that I was wrong. I didn't even have the time. Coming to stand before the people I want to preach to and tell them I'm a liar. That is another difficult one. So I dealt with it. I prayed and prayed and thought and thought and thought. And I realized that saying it in the church is better. How many of you were here that day? At least I can see two hands. Okay. So I got here and I told everybody, you know, as I was coming on the way, I told a lie, oh, this happened, oh, this happened, oh. And then the healings took place. The things God wanted to do were possible because I won the battle. Even though I lost the battle originally, 
I see there was a way of escape. I will still show you scripture about that. I need you to understand that temptations are normal things. They come our way, but the devil does not come with a horn on his head. He will manifest at a place you don't expect. He will manifest through people that you are not looking at. You don't see them as enemy. The devil would quickly accuse you when you are falling victim of his temptation. That's what happened to me there. And I didn't even know it was that serious until the Holy Spirit began to explain it to me. Let me go further. I remember another experience. We have been waiting, I've been waiting for like 40 days. Like 40 days. Consistently fasting, fasting, praying, praying. Towards the tail end of my fast, somebody sent a message to me. They needed to bury their, is it father now or something? And I, it was somebody very close to us, a, a kind of partner. I said, ah, I will come, I will come. The date was free. It was a Saturday, I will come. And it will be somewhere in Ekiti State. Then the fast ended, the date came. But unfortunately, I didn't, my wife didn't have money. I didn't have money. Nobody had money. We couldn't put the money to buy fuel together. So I just told myself, why would I keep myself? I don't have money. I can't be borrowing money to go and do somebody's burial. I'm not the preacher. I'm just going to attend. I, when they come, I'll go and give them something. So eventually, I went to their house to explain and give them uh, the envelope. When I got there, the man was not there. It was the wife that was there. You know, it's easier to talk to a man than to talk to a woman. Women are difficult to talk to by men. So I was trying to explain to her, you know. And then I was like, will I tell her I didn't have money? That's a shameful thing to say. I didn't think, I didn't plan it ahead. As I was talking, I just said, you know, at that time I was, I was not feeling well. That's why we couldn't come. And I gave her the envelope and I left. It was in Bodija. I was driving back home. As I moved a little distance, the Lord said, the Holy Spirit said, but were you sick on that day? I said, I think I was not feeling well. And the Holy Spirit said, yes, you were not feeling well. That was the week after. Not that week. Of course, I knew I wasn't feeling sick at that time. I knew it was that we didn't have money. It was only that it was difficult for me to say it. So I, I, I explained to the Holy Spirit. And he said, you know, you human beings, you always have problems about your ego. Why shouldn't you just have told her? Do, do, do you even need to explain anything to her? Oh, sorry, I couldn't come home and drop the envelope and leave. And that would be good enough. But you, you know, you want to show up your image. You want to say this, say that. Anyhow, you know, all those 40 days fasting that you were doing, that's what the devil just handled for you. You know, the devil is a master. Oh, oh my God. You don't know what I'm talking about. Some of us, you labor so hard and you think you have done so much. And then you wonder, how come nothing comes out of it? I often experience that also. And the Lord said, all the 40 days you were fasting, the devil just canceled everything for you with that incident. Just that one alone. And I, I, you know, I was shedding tears. I said, ah, Uluwa. So, what's all this for Hala now? I had been trying to be all right. Why did I allow this temptation? 
What do I do now? The Holy Spirit says it's very simple. Very, very simple. Just speak your phone. Call her. You know what I said the other time? It's not correct, oh. It's not correct, oh. It's not correct, oh. Huh? I began to think in my head. This woman was a member of my church. I was a pastor. They see me as a spiritual person. How will I now call and say, Excuse me, oh. Your pastor was a liar, oh. How do I say it? How do I say it? I struggle and struggle and struggle and struggle with it. I was driving until I got to Idiaro police station and I saw their police uh, thing. And I said, This is a police station. A lot part of middle fair mummy, yo. If I don't resolve this matter, I, I pick my phone. Any time I it, you only ban it, you if I tell you what I need to tell you and you don't greet me again, what does that do to me? I'm, hello, madam. Yes, God bless you, sir. Uh -huh. That story I told you is not correct. Oh. That day, I didn't have money. That's why I didn't come home. I thought she would never greet me again. I thought I couldn't do ministry with her again. But she respected me more. He said, ah, and you are telling me, sir. I said, yes, yes. I'm telling you, she didn't know how I struck before I told her. <laughs> I said, yes, I have to say it because I didn't do the right thing. That was a wrong thing to do. He said, thank you, sir. It didn't affect me in any way, but it moved me forward. Temptations are meant to cut you down. You know, I don't know about you, but I went to school in the university some years ago. You know, there are some courses, when you fail them, you can't move forward from that course. You keep on doing it again, again. And again, and again, and again. Am I, am I correct? Some of us are in such situations today. You have failed an exam. A temptation came up in your life, you failed. And you are still struggling with it. You are still battling with it. You are not ready to leave it. And that's the reason why you have not gone into what God is talking about. That's the reason why the doors have not opened unto you. I need you to understand. I, you know, this teaching is meant to be about Jesus' temptation. But the Holy Spirit is not allowing me to go. Last week, I just wanted to say something and go into the temptation Jesus had. But he didn't allow me. That's why I did all that I did last week. Today now, yesterday night when I was preparing for this meeting, the Holy Spirit said, I should not begin to talk about Jesus' temptation yet. I should give you examples on this subject. And that's why I'm doing all I'm doing now. I need you to understand that he who breaks the edge, the serpent shall bite him. And the way to break the edge around you is when you break, when you, when you, when you, when you feel temptations. The devil will attack you. He will attack your family. It will attack your ministry, your business. Because you have opened the door. You broke the edge. And it's not enough to plead for mercy before God. Because it's not only God that is involved. Yeah, it may be difficult for you, like I told you my own experience. But I discovered that when you do what is right, Heaven respects you more. Even men will respect you. I said, heaven will respect you more. And even the devil will fear you. And the people you think will disrespect you will respect you more. That lady, 
the couple, they are still my partner till today. So, in essence, although your fast is great, the devil is not threatened by your fast. Because even the servants of the devil, they fast. So. And the devil is not exactly like the picture we have of him with horn and all of that. He is a beautiful person that you will accost everywhere you go. And as you meet him here and there, he brings all kinds of temptations into your journeys. All kinds of de temptations into your life. And like I told you last week, God doesn't mind those temptations. God approves those temptations because it is those temptations that will prove that you are qualified for the next realm that God is taking you to. I remember when my marriage was younger than it is now. We will quarrel and quarrel over nothing. We've quarreled about we quarrel about how to press toothpaste. We quarrel about matches. Because before I got married, I was in charge of my house. I know where I put matches. So in the dark, I can go to pick it where I kept it. I don't need to put on lights to pick matches in my house or to pick anything. I know where everything is. But as soon as my wife came, that changed. You don't even move around in my house in the dark. Again. Because there can be one chair somewhere that was not meant to be. There can be a stool somewhere that was not meant to be. I said, ah, let's be to And then she'll say, I can put it wherever I want it. So we fought and fought and fought and fought and fought. Where is matches? Where is this one? Where is so we fought severally. But the reason why I'm talking about that is that there was a time there was an, a quarrel between us. And I've, I felt, of course, you always feel you are right and the other person is wrong. So I know I, know I was right and she was wrong. That's me now. That's me. She would also know that she's right. That's why you keep on fighting. Is that not so? Right. That was the way it was. And then I went to pray. When I got to the place of prayer, I couldn't assess the presence of God. I tried worship. I did everything. The door did not open for me. And I'm like, what's going on here? So I asked the Holy Spirit, what's, what's going on? How come I can't enter the presence of God? And he said, you're keeping malice with your wife. Go and settle with your wife. And then you have access to God. I said, I'm not the one fighting with her. She's the one who should settle with me. And the Spirit said, that's why you can't enter the presence of God. Until you resolve, you cannot enter. I said, but she's not ready to apologize. The Spirit said, you are the one to apologize. Go and apologize to her. Ah, but she was wrong. She's the one who should be sorry. The Holy Spirit said, no. Two of you cannot fight and one is wrong. Both of you are wrong. You are the head. The same dimension I'm thinking. You know, the reason why I'm saying she must apologize is because I'm the head. In Yoruba land, when there's a fight, when our fathers and mothers are settling for us, they will tell the woman, kneel down and beg your husband. They will tell the woman, oh yeah, apologize to your husband. Even when the man is wrong, that's what we do in our culture here. So I said, she's the one that is wrong. I am the head. And the Holy Spirit said, the reason why you have to apologize is because you are the head. Reason is in the head. Reason is in the head. 
iwo ni ade ori iwo lori ile yen iwo lo god of mu alafia apada wa le e you are the head you are the representative of god in that family you did not represent god well you did not represent God well. You did not represent God. And so you should apologize. That you got angry, you should apologize. That you did things wrong, you should say sorry. And that changed the pattern in our home. It's another form of temptation, you know. The devil can cause so much of trouble in your family just because of that mindset. So I, told, I, I went back and settled with my wife and cut off the malice. And I came back before God. As soon as I said, Oh Lord, my God, the door just opened. I got access instantly. So that changed my leadership style in my family. Now, as the leader, I'm the one that said to quarter. Whenever there's an issue between us, I'm the one that will say, okay, okay, let's forget it. I'm sorry. And then when I'm sorry, she's also sorry. When I've, I apologize, you are the one who wronged me, I'm apologizing to you. Why won't you apologize also? Quickly, the matter is resolved. And our home became better. I need you to know that the devil is like a servant of God. And his ministry is temptation. Hello? Are you still with me? The devil is like a minister and as a servant of God who has a portfolio of temptation. And is being used by God to prepare you for your glory or to disqualify you for your glory, from the glory when you are not ready for it. The devil would decide whether you will go forward or not. When God sends the devil to Job, it was like God was ready to take Job to another realm and he was checking. Let's see what Job will look like. And he handed him over to the devil. And the devil tormented him. By the time Job came out from it, God released a new dimension of blessing upon Job. Because he had become qualified for a higher glory. So the devil will tempt you. Therefore, you must be conscious of him always. And make him a part of your prayers. Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Lead us not into temptations. And deliver us from evil. Deliver us. Make it a regular part of your prayer. I have failed a number of temptations. I don't know about you. I have failed so many temptations. I remember we were driving to Taraba the other time. Normally, every year we go to the northeast. And as I was driving, the Lord showed me that one tire was about to remove. So I stopped and started fixing those tires. I had to work on all the four tires. Jack the thing up to tie it very well. Jack that one up and things like that. And I'm talking of Range Rover. The tires are very, very large. They are very involving. So it was a tedious experience. I labored, you know, because there was nobody with me now. I was the only one. So I was doing all the work. My wife was there with me, but you know, my wife is not a good assistant in things like that. She is good in many other things, but not in that particular area. That's one thing you need to discover in marriage. Your, your spouse is not good in every aspect of your life. There are some areas that you are the one that we handle by yourself. And there are some aspects that she will help you with. So this one, my wife doesn't help in that area. I was fixing those tires, fixing, and she was greeting me. She was standing by me. She was, and I was so tired. And then when I was finishing, doing the last one, 
she was she now asked if she should remove she should remove a stone that I used to wedge the tire. And I'm like, what kind of question is that? If you want to remove stone, remove it. If you don't want to remove it, leave me alone. I'm too tired to be talking rubbish now. Leave me alone. And she was angry the way I spoke to her. And I was angry that I was all alone doing all the work. So we had that argument. We returned into the vehicle and returned it on, on our journey. She began to give me attitude. You know now, that kind of attitude. I will not talk to you. That kind of attitude. And me too, I didn't bother. Don't talk to me. No, tell her. I don't want anybody to talk to me now. Leave me alone. So I just blabbed my kids. I was playing. I was just doing my own thing. And then all of a sudden, fire just started. Fire. Serious fire. My Range Rover just caught fire. You know the rest of the story. We tried to put off the fire. We did all of that and all of that. All of that took place. And then, when we settled in the hotel that night, because we became stranded in Boko, we couldn't leave the place. We had to even stay there for like two, three days or so, trying to figure out what to do with the vehicle. That night, I was very angry with God. I said, ah, how come you didn't protect us from that fire? And we are stranded here. While we are doing, we are going to do your work. That's not what we agreed upon. You broke the covenant. I was talking to God. You broke the covenant. He said, no, I did not break the covenant. You broke the covenant. You created the problem. When there was a, an argument, an issue between you and your wife, and you did not resolve, you broke the edge. You gave a chance to the devil to attack you. I couldn't help you because you have broken the, the, the instructions given to you. It's a law in our crusade. We don't fight. When we go on crusade, check, ask those who, are go, who go with me on crusade. It's a standing law. Huh? We don't fight. You, don't, you get angry. You deal with your anger and get it over with. Because that will open the door for the enemy. It's an instruction given to me by God. So when I allowed that thing to fester between me and my wife, I gave the chance to the devil. And the Lord said, you are the one who allowed him. I couldn't stop the devil. Actually, the Bible said we should not nurse our angers. He said, when you are angry, sin not. Let not the sun go down while you are still angry. Don't, it means don't nurse your anger. Deal with it and move forward. Well, when I nursed my own anger, I gave a chance to the devil in that situation. So I asked the Holy Spirit, you know, when you fall into a ditch, ask him what to do. So I asked him about the situation. What should I do? We are already stranded here. And I know that according to scriptures, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, there must be a way of escape. Let me read that scripture to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. He says, No temptation. No temptation has overtaken you except such that is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to handle? But with the temptation also, he will make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. He said, with that temptation, God will make a way of escape. So I knew that even though we were stranded in Boko at that time, there was a way of escape. So I asked him, 
what is the way of escape? And he told me, there are two things, or three. Number one, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice. Don't get distracted and be sad and be sorrowful that your vehicle got burnt. Rejoice. Number two, leave the vehicle behind. Don't let it stop. Don't let it stop the work you are about to do. Continue your journey with public transport. I say, if I leave the vehicle here, does it mean I'm abandoning the vehicle? It can still be repaired. He said, tell that mechanic to bring it to you. He will bring it. So I called the mechanic that was handling it in Boko. If I leave this vehicle, what will happen? He said, I will bring it to wherever you want me to bring it to. I said, okay. That's all right. So I work with Pademi. He mean lo lo Ah, he said you will leave the vehicle. I said I'm leaving it. He mean lo. She said lo lo I can't sit down here because of one vehicle. So I gave him all the money I needed to give him, and we went on the public transportation. While we were in Yola, he called and said he had, he had finished the vehicle. I said okay, very good. You meet us on the way when we are coming back. And then I will pay you balance and go my way. You know what? That made me to pass that temptation. Even though I failed, that's why the temptation tied me down there. But because I got it right, I took the right actions out of it. The result was that God used people to give me five vehicles from that experience. One, two, three, four, five vehicles. And that one, I, I even just gave it out to somebody else. Five vehicles from it. Because we handled it properly well. Now, let me add one to that story before I... Because I need you to see that we fail many times. Because temptation is a normal part of life. Whether you like it or not, you will see it every day. And I want you to see a number from my own experience before I close today. The following year after that particular incident of the fire, we travel on the same route with a new vehicle now. One of the ones that God provided. And this one was much better than the one that caught fire. Much better. Much better. We followed the same route. So when we were in the venue where it caught fire, where that one caught fire, you know, we, we, I became very excited, ecstatic to use that other word. And rather than giving thanks to God, I was hooting at the devil. I was abusing the devil. Satan, shame on you. I was hooting at the devil. I was abusing the devil. And my wife also was my companion. I was hooting at the devil. Oh, yes. We stopped over in Boko. We wanted to see people who helped us the previous year. But it was when we got to the venue where that fire was that I was saying, look at, look at, look at you now. You, you spoil one vehicle, one old vehicle. I brought a better one. God is, my God is greater, greater than you. Shame on you, Zeta. And I began to, you know, that kind of thing. When we got into the town, I was trying to enter the hotel where we would sleep the night. And a truck was coming from somewhere and it just rammed into my vehicle. Bwah! The whole of the back was smashed. It was, it was a very bad accident. I said, Abba, 
Oh, I felt like crying. When I looked at the damage on the vehicle, ha! You know all these Toyota vehicles, they, they get damaged so quickly when something hits them. Ha! And quickly, the people of that land, they have gathered. And they quickly discovered that we were not, we were strangers. And the other truck driver was one of them. Ah! All of a sudden, everybody was against me. I had to repair his own things. Ah, you say, ha, I should have carried you along to come and defend me. I repair his own vehicle. We pay for his items that pour on the floor. He pour on the floor. He didn't spoil it. I had to pay for them. Even though he was the one that hit my vehicle. Anyhow, when we sorted all of that, I got to the hotel. And I asked him like I will always ask him questions. Why did all of that happen to us? Because we traveled all the way from Ibadan. There was no problem. How come it was when we now got to this place? The same place where our vehicle got burnt last year. Is it that you don't want us to be passing this town? And the Holy Spirit said, no, there's nothing wrong with the town. The problem is with you. It's you. I said, what did I do? He said, why were you hooting at the devil? Why were you abusing the devil? What did he do? I said, I was excited. He said, when you are excited, you should praise the one that blessed you rather than abusing the one that has nothing to do with you. Why are you abusing the devil? Anyhow, the one that you abuse petitioned God against you. And God allowed him to teach you a little lesson. That's why that thing happened to you. So there's nothing wrong with the devil. It's not, there's nothing wrong with the town. There's nothing wrong with anything. It's you. I said, ha. So I cannot say, Satan, shame unto you. All power belongs to Jesus. That's somebody's song. Let me not talk about that. You know, many times we don't sit down to find out why some things happen to us. But you know that everything has, has a reason. There's always a reason for something. There's always a reason for something. Temptations, there are different levels, different types of temptations. Okay, I hooted at the devil, I made the jest of the devil for what he did last year, and then my vehicle was spoiled. And I had to spend so much money putting the vehicle back before we could continue our journey. He said, why did you abuse the devil? You should have just left him alone. And give thanks to the one who gave you vehicle. Ah, Father, last year we got here, we had trouble. Thank you, Father, you gave us victory. Thank you, we have a better vehicle. You could just give glory to God and just forget about the devil. Just forget about the devil. And he told me, always leave the devil alone. Always leave him alone. He is never responsible for what you get. You are responsible for every experience you have. So don't, don't blame him at all. Leave him alone. Just leave him alone. Well, in a, as I'm summarizing, not every temptation is aimed to cause you to sin. It, immediately. Some are meant to stop you from accomplishing destiny. Some are meant to even end your life abruptly. To end your life abrupt, abruptly. There are some temptations that are meant to... The devil bring it to you. Not, not just for you to sin. He's trying to cut you short before your time. To repay, I want to say, come on, to get to bat, to get by. Don't, don't need. Eh? Be a kutu, get poison. Oh my God, no, Lord. 
Somebody was a priest in an Orthodox church. And he became obsessed with the idea of becoming a bishop. The devil began to push it to him. You, you, you are better than all of them. They should make you a bishop. You can become a bishop. And he went to the extent of taking series of loans so that he can go and lobby his way into position of a bishop. Say, I want to become a bishop. So he began to pay money, give money, give money to people so that they can make him a bishop. They were going to promote some people to become bishops. So he wanted to become one of the bishops. And he took loan from everywhere to give to those babas so that they can make him a bishop. And he was coasting along. It was like he was one of the people they were considering, they were looking at it, they were debating, they were voting. And But unfortunately, when the final vote was cast, this person did not become a bishop. He missed it narrowly. When the news came out that he missed the position, and another person has taken his position, he suffered a heart attack. Attack. Eh? And unfortunately, he died. Now, that temptation that came to him did, did not probably lead him into sin. Maybe, he didn't, maybe sin was not the focus of that temptation. That temptation was focused upon his lifespan. And unfortunately, he fell into the trap of the devil. Recently, another person died that I know quite well. For the past 10 years, he had been battling to become the king of his town. 10 years of battle. Spending money, spending time, investing so much. But unfortunately, he didn't become. Unfortunately. It's unfortunate. But he died. He died. I don't know what he did in the process of trying to be governor. I mean, the, the king. There's a possibility he might have done some things that he shouldn't do. Who knows if he made heaven after all. So what I'm telling you today is simple. Temptation is normal. And it is meant to be a blessing if you handle it well. It's meant to bless you. It will promote you if you handle it well. Waga to bati pass it down wood. To ba pass ye. Wagasi. Shuba to ba pass it. O she she ko pada seni. But to ba wa pada seni ye o. Ko tu masipe o ti tan fwe. That doesn't mean it is over for you. What do you need to do? You just need to do a receipt of that examination. You may need to do that class repetition. If you are ready to correct your mistakes, then you will still move forward. But you know the unfortunate thing is that most of us, when we feel temptations, we are not sorry about it. Neither do we care. It's not a new thing. So because of that, we don't make progress in the spiritual realm. Some of us are so bent on our own ego. Our own thing must happen. And we don't care about the word of God. Anyhow, he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But he that confesseth and forsaketh it shall find mercy. Until the day you die, temptations will come your way. It will never stop. It will always come. But you must always be victorious. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control wherever you may lead I will follow. 
I have made a choice to listen for your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will go. Shepherd of my soul. Please rise, let's pray. I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will follow. I have made a choice to listen for your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will go. You are going to pray. I will be victorious over temptations in my life. In the name of Jesus. Can you pray that prayer? Grace for victory. Give it to me, Lord. I want to be victorious over temptations that come my way. In the name of Jesus. Pray, pray. Pray. It doesn't matter who you are. Whether you are a man of a, 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 a man of God, you are a bishop, you are whatever, you are a businessman, temptation is a normal part of life. And it will keep on coming your way. Different types of temptations. I will be victorious. Give me grace to be victorious. In the name of Jesus. And if I fall, if I fail temptations, may I be humble enough to acknowledge my error and make adjustments in the name of Jesus. The grace for humility. When I make mistakes, that I will be able to correct them. Can you pray? Pray for that grace. You are not the first person that will make mistakes. You are not the first person and you are not going to be the last person. The important thing is, am I ready to straighten my way? When we do make mistakes, the correct thing is to ask for assistance, to help you to come out of it. Grace, to humble myself and make adjustments. Lord, give it to me. Pray, pray, pray for that grace. Shepherd of my soul, shepherd of my soul. I give you full control wherever you may lead I will fall.